Hi everyone, uh, this is Bagadon. It is uh, July 10th, July 10th at about 11.30 and I uh, just wanted to do a comparison of the S&P against uh, two or three other markets and, um, and offer an observation or two. The green line, the green line is the S&P um, represented by the ES futures contract the continuous contract on a monthly basis. This is the green line monthly going all the way back to the crash of 09, back in here, much of 09, and then the Rampalooza all the way up to where we are now. The yellow, um, This other uh, numbers here, this is a Fibonacci from A to B to C, and then the extension to D, and you can see we're just cresting over um, the 1.61 expansion, and uh, which at this point on a monthly basis by any metric <laughs> forget about your dailies forget about your weeklies we are extended and we are very much on borrowed time it's even interesting uh, not this is a time cycle um, and um, actually this should be brought in let me uh, make an adjustment here hold on this uh, this time cycle is measuring on a monthly basis the A point I bring this back up into view so you can see where it started we matched it right there with the launch in March, and then this is the um, you know this is the A point B, and then the C point to get an idea of the uh, the time frame. And uh, one thing these central planners like is the trains to run on time. So we are extended 1.61 plus, uh, very much extended on price, and we're very much extended on time. We're running almost two cycles. If we were to, let me freeze this here so I can use my cursor, this would represent a uh, crash point of uh, November 30th, November 30th. We don't think we get there. Uh, we think we'll be in uh, crash mode and hunker down, but isn't it uh, funny how the time cycle is saying, you know, this is the area in which, um, you know, we're now on the downslope but this yellow line is important to us uh, it's gold gold on a monthly and you see gold ramped with a loss of confidence in all the QE talk and the inflation talk and then it ultimately corrected and crossed and the market you know continued to ramp but something happened right here and this is in uh, December of uh, 2015 where gold stopped going down and the market for all intents and purposes stopped going up and then gold has ramped quite a bit uh, probably some um, you know 20 some odd percent 25 percent and the S&P has stopped so anyone who has been selling S&P paper shares and buying gold at this point is smart money because they are getting themselves out of risk assets um, and they're putting themselves in a hard metal that is actually going up in value now let's take this gold symbol and let's put on FedEx as a representation of the transport sector and I want to show you something the uh, the yellow line is now um, FedEx and if we come back here to the historically FedEx representing the transport sector runs really with the S&P if we come back up here with its the green line is the S&P. This was the double topping action in the summer of 07 when we actually then preceded the the crash what now historically looks rather tame to what is to come the crash in 09 and it was our uh, perception here I'll let you measure it up but that FedEx transports led that that break and was the tell. As we've run up here it's almost the reverse. Look at this action here. Um, we have the, and this goes back to the summer of last year. This is when FedEx did a little double top. Again, summer of last year, and then FedEx makes lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, and still even a lower high. Still has not made a new high, and is still chevroning um, these little fish hooks on a monthly basis down. And the S&P has not picked up that, that clue yet and is act, actually doing something that TWA 800 did. It is losing its leadership. It's lost its nose cone. And the momentum of the market is still trying to push it higher. We don't think that lasts for very much longer. And then lastly, I want to take a look at the 10-year uh, the bond. And we're going to change this and look at the 10-year bond. So we're going to change that yellow line. Now the yellow line is the 10-year bond. And 
the, historically, the perception has been that uh, when bonds go down, um, bonds go down when interest rates rise, and bonds um, go up when interest rates come down. And the historic notion has been that people go into treasuries when they're fearful, when they're defensive, when they don't think there's going to be any more growth. And when they do go into treasuries, they push the yields down. And, uh, and that is a, uh, a tell. That, um, <clears throat> and then when they are um, very optimistic, they will pull their money out of uh, growth or out of 10-year um, um, bonds and pile into growth markets. Well, there's something very curious here because even back just a few short months ago when the Contrarian News Bubble Channel was talking about, you know, there being a great rotation of money from bonds to stocks, we're like, what are you talking about? Um, you know, treasuries are correlating with stocks and have been. Now, it's funny because now they're pointing that out that they're all correlated and they're going together. But back then, when they were talking about a great rotation and there was going to be this great liftoff, you know, the perception was or their representation was that somehow they were inverse. You can go back to our videos and we were commenting on that. You can see here from at least March of 09, this, this is a classic case. You see here that where treasuries did go up, did go up, and the market went down. Okay, so this was definitely a tell, this cross here of, you know, fear. But then the market launches for whatever reasons. QE, you know, we all have our reasons, but, you know, probably more than anything, I don't think it was so much of a prospect of growth, but lower interest rates. But look at the, uh, the treasuries also rise, and they rise together, and they continue to rise. So the question is, what in the world is going on? You know, a dog's marrying cats and cats marrying dogs here. Are, are people putting money into treasuries because they fear growth? And then there's some other flow of money into S&P because they want growth and they think there's growth. That's what's got everybody perplexed. Um, here, we think it's a very simple uh, explanation that all of this has been um, jury rigged. And from the moment this happened, prices have become deformed or distorted and we think that there's actually two things going on people are in fact pouring money into treasuries because they are fearful and the interest rates are going down and going lower which means that the uh, treasuries are going to go higher but they're also doing something else they are borrowing money borrowing money at very very cheap assets this is the retail crowd we believe and they are pouring it into the market now the market has tried on two occasions to try to correct and break this correlation but there were people that didn't understand any of this didn't buy any of these dips and now that the market is actually topping out they're still here pouring in money borrowed money very very dangerous borrowed money at cheaper rates probably leveraging as well to try to play a game of catch up and thinking that you know things are going to go higher forever so we trust um, you know they talked about Tina um, there is no other alternative uh, always is ATT at always trust treasuries always trust treasuries smart money is pouring money into treasuries because this relationship is much like FedEx is going to break and break with a vengeance break with a vengeance so folks um, best of luck to you especially if you're long um, not a good time to be borrowing money to go into leveraged stocks not a good time to be borrowing money to go into dividend paying stocks they don't really understand that um, they some brokers and brokers are basically trying to turn the s p into a certificate of deposit or trying to turn it into the bond market saying that if you buy a particular stock you get a three percent dividend or you get a four percent dividend or you get a five percent dividend and that the sheep you know think oh that's wonderful the only problem is they don't understand the risk to the underlying principle if the stock that's yielding a 5% dividend takes a 50% haircut in its principal, well, 
you can do the math as to how long that um, dividend would need to pay out just to get back to even. And the reality of it is, too, those dividends can be and will be cut. So be careful, folks. Um, this is not the time. Is not the time to be on margin and taking on more risk. This is now the time to be taking risk off and, if anything, selling the highs.